Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel, Cracks Are Turning Problems Into Solutions. This is me Priya Shadas and today in this video we'll be discussing a complex looking but easy DI question and we'll see how to solve these type of questions and this is the part one where we'll discuss the first two questions and if you want to practice more such questions with me then you can surely join my free live classes at Unacademy. I have added the link of my profile in the description box so that you can check that out, follow me over there and you will be getting notified of all the free classes I take there so that you can join me live, practice more new questions over there and ask your doubts simultaneously. And with this, I would love to tell you that now is the right time where the exclusive CAT study material is finally up from an academy. Now, whatever was there, every time an academy proved its worth by providing the best tutors, the best mock tests, but now it has also come up with the best study material which will be comprehensively com completing all your syllabus extensively giving you 25,000 plus practice questions of all the topics with FAQ, study material, including your tips and strategies as well. And all of this will be included in your current prices of subscription. That means if you use the link in the description box and subscribe using my code Priyasha10 to either the plus or the iconic subscription, then you will be not only entitled to the live classes, batches, courses and tests, but would also get access to this study material absolutely included in this price. And this is a one-time offer because the moment they are going to release their study material, they are going to get a hike. And therefore, you people will be getting all of these facilities at a higher price if you wait for a little longer. So please do not wait anymore and just hurry up and grab this limited period offer where using my code, you can get additional 10% off on the existing prices and still book your notes for the upcoming CAT examination. This will also cover the extensive courses for OMITS as well. And physical notes will be provided to the iconic subscribers at the present reduced rates. So do not forget to subscribe right now if you are even planning for a structured preparation for CAT and the coming OMITS. So use the link in the description box and my code Priyasha10 to get an additional 10% off. And now let's get our video started. Hello everyone, so in this video we will be discussing the part 1 of a complex looking but easy bar graph. The bar graph right in front of you has so many sections in a single bar. Now whenever a person come across these kind of questions, the first look, okay, the first look is always scary and it's look like, oh my god, so many percentages, so many divisions, there are 6 divisions in a single bar and there are 4 such bars. So that might look a difficult set to people, but when you get down on solving it or just trying to skim through the questions, you would very soon realize that it's not as difficult as it looks. So do not skip these type of questions in the examination just because they look scary. They might not look scary, but still be difficult in the normal terms. So therefore, it's always important to analyze the questions and look at the data provided. Provide it at least one minute to understand what the questions are asking you. And then you decide whether it is a complex one to be done in round two, round three or to be skipped altogether. So let us get started with this and let's read what's the data mentioned over here. The stacked bar graph represents the percentage breakup of the marks of four students PQRS in six different tests, which is A, B, C, D, E, F. So you can see the different colors and the different uh, way of shading represents the six different test marks. Now the marks of each test would be actually the percentage difference over here. For example, 35 minus 20 is 15% and 15% of the total score is scored in test B. Where is the total score written? The total score of P is 400, same as Q and then R and S have 375 as the total score. So that means 15% of 400 is the test mark scored in B by P. So that's how the data needs to be accommodated. So this is something where you understand, this is the point where you understand that how the data is to be observed. Once you get the way of getting the data from a table or from a bar graph and converting it into a table, 
life becomes absolutely simpler in such questions so we'll directly jump to the question and we'll see the two type of questions okay now the two questions which i'm going to take up in this part one are something for which you might not need the entire data of the table you must have seen that there are some questions which are very object based they are exactly pinpointing towards a place where you need to focus and so solving the entire bar graph and converting it into a table chart is not required so we'll be dealing with such two questions over here and then in the remaining part that is part 2 of the same video we'll be dealing with three more questions where we'll see how we have to convert the entire bar graph into a particular table and then get all the data and then compare the data it's a safer side to do but still we'll be discussing some tips or tricks which we can apply to ditch some part of the calculation so the first question here says who among the following scored the highest marks in test d so in test d we are going to focus on these type of lines so we'll go up and check we are going to see the horizontal lines part so we will be checking this percentage this percentage this percentage and this percentage so what are we going to compare we are going to compare all the percentages over here now when are we going to compare all the percentage we will subtract 67.5 minus 48.75 this difference in the percentage is equals to 18.75 so you can make a note of it if you want to use the same table like annotate on the same table you can do that otherwise if you are doing it somewhere you can mention that for p the difference is 18.75% of 400 and for q the value for d becomes 65 minus of 43.75 you can do that mentally you can do that uh, by using pen whatever you feel comfortable in 21.25% now this is quite obvious that since the value of the base number 400 is same for p and q 21% will surely be more than 18% so i know that a is not my answer for sure so far we are considering q to be the highest number now we will check for r and s of course so the difference between r and s is going to be 60 minus 40 is 20 and 20 minus 4 is 16 so 16.33% of the number 16.33% of the number 375 now look at this comparison without solving this can you make a decision over it the base number is smaller than 400 q and r if i compare q and r the base number is smaller than the previous number and at the same time the percentage value is also smaller so it's quite obvious for us to understand here that 110% this number is going to be less than q so r is also gone and finally we will check s s is having a difference of 61.33 minus 46.67 so if i subtract this decimal i'll get 14.66% so i'll go down and i'll again compare 14.66% of 375 with 21.25% and it's very very clear that since the percentage and the number both are less than q d is also gone and without any calculation and you mean you can't call that subtracting value as a calculation so we come across the answer which is 21.25% of 400 that is equivalent to somewhere across 85 is the highest marks in test d scored by q so that will be my answer so this is some tricks you can use to ditch a small amount of calculation in such question this will be really helpful and this is one of the object you know object oriented and <laughs> that's not the op which we use in computer but this is object oriented question that means you don't have to solve the entire set to solve this question and these type of questions should always be taken into consideration because if without solving a question you people are able to you know without solving the entire set you are able to answer a part of the question just by looking at four or five numbers you should never miss that question in any of the set even if you are not attempting the entire set go to a random set and get search for such object oriented questions because that will fetch you an additional marks which can change your percentile by a huge number 
all right so coming to the second question now if the maximum marks in each test is 120 how many tests did q score more than 60 percent so for solving this question you will first find out the 60 percent of 120 which is 72 and now you have to make a comparison on the various tests where the marks of q is more than 72 now for Q, the total marks is 400. So remember that this will be very important in your calculations. And then we have to go across all the tests. So this is the stack bar chart of Q. And I'll be considering 72 marks for my comparison. Now 72 marks for 120 is equivalent to 60% and I need more than 60%. So over here, let us try to calculate that. Now, the first thing which will come to my mind is 17.5%. So, for 17.5%, the easy breakup can be 15% plus 2.5%. Now, 15% of the number 400. 400 can be written like 15% can be written as 10% plus 5%. 400 10% is 40 and 40 plus half is 20. That is 60. So, 50% is giving me. 60 over here and 2.5 percent will be half of 10 that is 10 so 60 plus 10 will give me 70 that means 17.25 percent is equals to 70 marks over here now if i go back to my table and check 17.5 will not go beyond 72 it will only stop at 70 so this will not be counted as a test more than 72 now if 17.5 is not in the game 10 will also not be in the game because the difference between 27.5 and 17.5 is 10. So even that test will not be considered. Now, if we'll find out the difference of 43.75 minus 27.5, then we will get 16.25. And for 16.25 also, the answer will not be beyond 72 because the answer was not beyond 72 for 17.5. So make a, we can make a direct comparison over these two numbers. Now going up, we can see some significant changes. 65 minus 43.75 will give us a bigger number than 17.5, which is 21.25. This difference comes out to be as 21.25, and this is significantly higher and at the same time giving you 85. So this is surely more than 72. We will consider this test. This test is test D okay horizontal lines test d now if i check another one at the top that is 86.25 minus of uh, 65 percent so that will give me again 21.25 same number so of course going above 85 marks 72 is less than 85 so this test will also be considered so test d and test e are considered but when i go up and check 100 minus 86.25 that's 13.75 and that number is less than 17.5 so that will not be counted as a test in which uh, q scored more than 72 so there are only two tests d and e in which it is scoring more than 72 so d and e are my answer 2 is the number and that's how you solve such questions. So you saw you just took one bar graph, I mean one stack of bar chart and you solved this entire question. This again falls into the category of object oriented question which will fetch you one marks without doing a lot of hard work of solving the entire bar set into a tabular form. So this was all about this video. I'll be coming up with the next video in, it, in which I'll give you three more questions, question number three to question number five. And these questions are available in the practice PDF. So do download the practice PDF from the uh, description box and try it on your own and then wait for a few hours and I'll be releasing the part two as well where I'll be discussing the answers and the process of solving such questions right there in the video so if you like this video please like this video share it with more and more people and if you are new to this channel then do subscribe to the channel as well and that was all about this video thank you so much for watching it and until we meet again please take care of yourself